welcome to the Killing Podcast. This is episode 12, Beausoleil. Beausoleil. Hopefully I'm not butchering the French. <clears throat> that one. Beausoleil. I want to just want to sing Beausoleil for the San No, it's Ban, Ban de Soleil. Yeah, well, you know what? This doesn't say But I wanted to just Beau sing Ban de Soleil, but then you went What's right that? over me. Ben de Soleil for the Central Pay <laughs> That's what I just said. No, you said Beau Soleil. I was singing the right words. Oh. <laughs> we are off and running. Off on and this falling. Episode. Tripping yes. tripping and falling. So uh what okay, wait a is second. This 12? I'm your host, Martha Southgate. And I'm Rob Southgate. Okay, yes, it is episode twelve. So Beausoleil. <laughs> with my newfound information, that means one more. It's the twelfth day. Oh. One more? What did that mean? Well, there are only thirteen episodes in the season. Oh, true. But that's not newfound information. Bend a solo for the central patent. I can't remember the tune. And I'm probably no, way know. off. But it's really awesome, though. I can kind of hear it, but it doesn't mean I can recreate it. Right. Right. So this one starts differently than the other ones. Mm -hmm. We see... It kind of looked like like the beginning of Jurassic Park. Like it looked like they were out in the mud and they were digging. And we see men at night. Oh, yes. no, it's men at work. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I had a joke waiting, and it didn't work. No, it, uh, men at work didn't work. No, didn't work. Mm -hmm. And they were men without hats. Do you want to make a joke? Oh about my that gosh, too? they had hats on though. Oh, they had hard they? hats. I didn't catch. They that. were digging. I'm, Digger I'm folks. digging this conversation. Okay, so they were digging. digging at night in the rain, of course. Yes. Now, did you know where they were? Because I didn't reckon I didn't know what they were doing until the camera pulled back. I, I didn't thought, know. why are they excavating? What is going on here? I know. I know now. Yeah. Would you it, like me to tell you? Or do sure. You, or do you want enlighten me? Okay. They're digging. <laughs> they're what digging. What that about? <laughs> they're digging where the mayor's project is. Right. That's it's all part I know. of the revitalization. <laughs> so that's it's was, on the waterfront. That was Great your movie. big dramatic reveal. Reveal. They yes. uncover a skull. Yes. And it wasn't the crystal skulls from Indiana Jones. I don't know what you're talking about. But I was thinking about it as usual. You don't know the kingdom of the crystal What? You don't know. You either of you, apparently. The you kingdom know, the of people. the crystal skulls. You don't know that one? No. Okay, well. After the podcast, we're going to sit down and I'm going to have, I'm going to give you some education about the Edumacate, kingdom of the crystal. You're going to educate me? No. That's another podcast. I'm going to give you education about the kingdom of the crystal skulls and continue. So I want to drag this out as long as possible then no. until you forget? No. No. We'll just watch it. So we see them digging. They find a skull. And right away, of course, we're thinking it's related to the murders or the murder. I'm thinking, oh, they're finding more, more bodies murders. and there's murders, but that wasn't it. It was just the fact that they found a skull at Mayor Adams' revitalization project, and this spells bad news for Mayor It was Adams. probably one of um, Stan's. Ooh. Was well, was Stan a murderer? I like to think he was a I think he was just a... Uh, uh, he was just a hit... Uh, not a hitman. I thought man. he was a hitman. No, no, no. They called him something else. He's just muscle. like the muscle. He's the guy that goes out and beats the heck out of people just to the point of death. That's lovely. But I don't think he was a killer because they knew who he was and they weren't, like, the cops knew what he did and they didn't, he wasn't arrested or anything. It's not like you can just go, I'm done being a killer. I'm going to have these kids now. All charges dropped. It doesn't work that way. Really? I didn't know that. Right. But him uh -huh. beating people up, they may not have been able to. But I'm just, that. I was just thinking it was part of their mob. Right. I can see that. I was thinking it was another murder, but it well, wasn't. Well, clearly. Well, it was, but it wasn't related. No, it wasn't. It wasn't another murder. It was a skull. But it was a skull. But you know what the skull was? Have you forgotten already? Okay. They were Go digging ahead. on an Indian, Indian burial ground. What? Oh my gosh, do not freak me out. And just like poltergeist. You're lying to me. I am not lying to you. The, and they said, you didn't check this area thoroughly enough before you started digging. You rushed the paperwork. You rushed this. Where was I? They, it was just in the dialogue. They were talking about this, and they were saying, because they, they said, I think it was Jamie made the comment that this happened in the past when, when they started digging too fast, and they were on an Indian burial ground, and they hadn't checked with the, the local Indians. And here it happened again, and 
that spells bad news. And remember when they were saying that at the one site that the uh, that another mayor had been involved with, they found a finger, an Indian's yes. finger. And then they never, that project never happened. The project never happened. The guy never got reelected. Mm-hmm. And that's why Adams is like, they found a whole skull in mine. I'm right. I'm done. So that's what that was. Interesting. So you forgot that. I you know what? I that was lost on me. So so Sarah's calling her ex. Okay. Jack's dad. And oh gosh, I was thinking it was the aggressive kisser, but this no, was the her ex I don't know if he was ever her husband. Right, but, but it's Jack's, Jack's father. Dad. Yeah. And Holder holds up the picture of Rosie from the ATM. Um she, uh, Sarah tells her ex that she and Jack are doing fine. And that he should just go home to Chicago. Right. She also made the comment, because uh, we're getting a little backstory here, that he was non-existent mm-hmm. for 10 years. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, this guy, you, I, I feel for this guy kind of, actually. Because, yes, he's non-existent. Yes, he was out of the picture. Yeah, that's all bad. But then you hear his side of the story with her, and it's not necessarily, he. he I mean, yeah, he should have been there for Jack. But he left under bad circumstances because of Sarah, is at least the impression I got. So whatever happened, whatever this piece of the story that we're going to get at some point here about Sarah and her past, it's related to this guy. So I think they were kind of demonizing him on purpose so that now you'd start questioning, like, wait, is he a demon? What If he wasn't around for 10 years, why? Was she keeping him completely at bay? And he finally just said, I can't take it anymore? What's the deal? So I thought this was really... A, a cool thing to bring into this was this storyline instead of the aggressive kisser. Yes, I, I, I had agree. I agree. So um, Holder found lots of pictures of Rosie at the ATM. Right. And he find he found out that she has made seven thousand dollars in deposits in a bank account, but it's not her account. Right. When so she was making deposits there at the casino, and uh, and then uh, wait, what is this? I'm sorry, I got to pause. I wrote. 1237 at the casino in the sweater. <laughs> I don't know what that means. 1237. Okay, so they were placing, it was placing Rosie at the casino at 1237, and that she was making large deposits not into her own account. So the pictures say that, that Rosie was there at 1237 at the casino. AM or PM? PM. Well, no, AM. 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 And that's when Holder found that she was making the large deposits, and they were not into her account. So it was 1237, so they're getting more of that time frame. Remember in that yeah. last one, we were talking about where she was and how they were placing her in time. With the cab and all And here that. she is, 1237. It's starting to make mm-hmm. sense. And uh, so now we know for sure the mayor's project is over. It will be buried in court now that they found a skull. Right. And, and the mayor even says that the governor won't call him back right. at this point. So he's dead in the water. Jamie, very happy about On this. the flip side of that, Darren's campaign is flourishing. Uh, of course it is. And so that's... Well, and then the 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 senator, uh, Gwen's dad, calls Darren to congratulate him. So talk about the flip side. All of a mm-hmm. sudden, this guy who was not backing Darren or acting like Darren is, you know, not worth his time, is calling to congratulate him because he sees that the tide is turning because of this event. Hmm. Interesting. So now we're back and we're with Mitch. Oh, Mitch. And Mitch is Mitch, in a bad way. Yeah, she is. And she's she's upset about Stan, about the money and everything. Well, she's digging through paperwork she's at, going the through the at the trying garage, trying to figure out where this money went. And while she's doing this, yeah. the phone rings and the voicemail is Yannick. Mm-hmm. And he's calling up. This is the mob guy. Yep. And... She is already, if you think about it from her perspective, that, that's what's important, I think, through a lot of this, is if you if you look at the character's perspective, you really get a, a different story throughout. Yes. So her perspective, she thinks Stan has been working for Yannick. When he calls, this is just reemphasizing. And that. where, and she is wondering, where the heck did he, what did he do with $16,000? Where did this money go? And what is he, yeah, so well, she, she doesn't know he's what gambling, he's up to. And yeah. Yannick is, is where his money would be going. Yeah. So she thinks that he got into gambling debts with Yannick, and now he's having to do stuff for Yannick. So That's she, absolutely what she's she going She confronts for. Belko and fires him for not telling her the truth. Yeah, she's had enough of Belko. He's not he's not forthcoming. And you know what's what's funny is 
I wonder if his mom was a fan of Sergeant Bilko. <laughs> oh, that's Bilko. Sorry, go ahead. Could be. Uh, she might she, have been just drunk enough. To, just wrong drunk name. enough. <laughs> she, uh... Okay, wait. What? It's kind of like our cat. What? She She's just one Cowboy? letter off. No, hang on. So she... So oh, Sergeant Bilko. Yes. When we had we had was one cat and and we named he used to love to watch TV and we named him Chance, Chance after the character from being there. All right, wait a minute. Only to you find out that his Chance. name was Chauncey. Right, Chauncey Gardner, and you named him Chance. I named him Chance. And then a while later, we figured out like, wait a minute. Oh, oh his we name was Chauncey. Him. Yeah, we're idiots. <laughs> well, at least we didn't call so him maybe, Belko. Maybe Belko's mom was an idiot. Well, well no, maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, so she confronts him, kill, uh, kills him. Oh. No. So here's Fires what I was saying. Him. Here's what I was saying about about this Belko thing. Mm-hmm. So Belko is not forthcoming about Stan, but she's thinking he's not being forthcoming about what Stan's up to with Yannick, which is why she fires him. But the reality is he's just not forthcoming because he's Belko, because mm-hmm. he's this weird freak guy. And he's protective of Stan, and he has a little issue with with Mitch, as we know, because she doesn't like him hanging out in their house, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, which I would approve of, frankly. I don't know what Mitch's problem is. Great. <laughs> Mental notes. Mental don't notes. Leave don't Rob with Belko with our child. No, with Belko. No, because the reason that we're worried that she would have been concerned is because they had a teenage daughter and. I think it's more than that. I think it's just because he's Belko. Well, there's that, but... Think about the scent he would leave on the kitchen chairs. Yep. All right, yep. so Stan calls and leaves a message. Right, he calls from prison. Yeah, there's a bond hearing after he sees a psychiatrist. Right, She and and she doesn't answer. He has to... Does he leave a message, or does he just... He, Stan calls and leaves a message. Okay, I didn't know if he left she a message. She didn't answer. I knew that she didn't answer, though. And there's a bond hearing after he sees the psychiatrist. Yeah. I don't know why we are so off our game on this tonight, but we are completely, like, I want to talk about everything but the killing, and I love this episode. But I seem to be thinking about Indiana Jones, and I seem to be thinking about Sergeant Belko. Bilko. Bilko. And uh, I'm just a little, and now I'm thinking about him I'm thinking about my prison. doorbell. When are you going to ring it? I'm thinking about him at prison and how it's like Orange is the New Black. I just can't get yes. these things out of my head. Yes. Okay, let's go, let's so go back Terry, to the, And now I'm thinking about Breaking Bad because wasn't Terry on Breaking Bad? She was. She yeah. was. Or was she on S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah. She was on something. I'm just going to say yes to anything you say because I don't remember. Okay. What I remember is she plays prostitute on something. Yes. So Terry finds out the account is in her name. And Rosie borrowed her ID to go to a club. Oh, right. And so she, um, they're trying to figure out how her name is on this account. And she says, oh. She just completely denies knowledge of it. Well. And yeah. says it's not her account. But then she realizes. I don't trust this chick. Rosie borrowed Terry's ID to get into the club. She probably set this, set up the account and everything using Terry's ID. Wouldn't you assume? Or is it Terry's account? I think Terry's. You think Terry's? Yeah, because you know what? Terry acts like, it, it, as it goes on, she acts like she doesn't know things that she you know she knows. So there's something yeah, there. Yeah, she's dirty. Okay. So the mayor and Gwen meet, and he gives her a packet. Right. And we don't see what this is or anything, mm-hmm. but he says, you're going to want to know what's in here. Yeah. This is important. And she... Is acting like aloof, like she's not really like what are you in here. Me? What is this yeah. crap you're giving me? More mudslinging. I don't want anything to do with it. And that's what we see is him hand her the envelope, and he just uh, says, "Do with it what you will." Yep. So now we're finally to a scene with Holder and Holder and Sarah. Sarah again. They pick up his old partner. She used to work undercover at the casino. Right, and they're in a real nasty area. At first, I thought. I, you know, I must not be very swift because I did not think she was a partner. I thought she was his old drug buddy. Well, that's because she was she, she was, was undercover. undercover. Right. But um, she says that Rosie looks like a Beausoleil girl, and that you know, at the escort, it's an escort service. So now they're finally on the right track. Right. Or at least on a track that is leading somewhere. Yeah, but they're on the right track to this to this agency and. 
to understanding what well, the heck is going on at this casino. I thought this was was uh, interesting too because what the what what his old partner says is she doesn't recognize Rosie, but immediately she looks like a high end prostitute. He's mm-hmm. like she or she says she she definitely looks like a Beausoleil girl. Yep. So it wasn't that she I ID'd her. It's that no. Nope. It had all the earmarks of a Beausoleil girl. Yep. She sees them all the time. She said. At, at the casino. At the casino. I, this mm-hmm. is something that is common. Yep. So, wow. What was Rosie mixed up in? No. I mean, you know, we and saw. And what is Terry know that she's holding well, back? Think about when this series started, when they were doing the stuff with the cage, and we thought she's this innocent girl, and she's getting attacked in the cage. And then it's not her, and like all these things that we've uncovered and the about Rosie, and all these things. Yeah. yeah, and and now and like we've we've skimmed around this where we thought, hey, why did she have these shoes? And I never was... really thought she was an innocent girl. I fi- I figured she was up to a lot of trouble, but I, I just wasn't sure exactly, you know, what they were going to. I uncover. wasn't sure she was up to a lot of trouble. Oh yeah, I was I was uh, under the impression that she was. Uh, she ended up in a bad situation, but she wasn't necessarily a, a, a bad kid. Like she, like think about it. Like people fall, especially like in high school, you fall in with your friends in some kind of situation. It could have turned on a dime, and all this stuff happened to her. And we're seeing circumstantial evidence that's leading up to that. That still could be what we're seeing, even though you know we, we're thinking now. Wow, she was tied up with this Beausoleil thing, and there was more going on than we thought. Mm-hmm. But if we think about her journey or, or our opinion of her on this journey, it's been really uh, complex. I mean, this kid had something going on. Yep. Even if she's not this high-end prostitute, she had something, some kind of life going on. Yep. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. I agree. It wasn't even a soapbox. It was more like I was sitting it on the couch talking. It was more of a, a rant. I was, I was pondering. Of, yeah. Was that uh, like Dennis Miller with his rants? It was a filibuster. Hey, cha-cha. It was a filibuster. Um. So Jamie shows up at Tom's. If you're house. not careful, I am going to filibuster. Take that afterwards about Indiana Jones. Okay, so Jamie shows up. I wrote Tom's house. It's Drexler's house. Yeah, is his name Tom? I or Mark? I always want to call it's him Mark. Tom. Okay, it's Tom. He we talked about up. this on the last episode. You thought it was Mark, and we looked it up. It's Tom. De- so Dex Drex Drexler 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 Drexel Drexler. Okay, on the one I wrote. Wait, the can wrong you not last say name. it? Can no, I on the last one I wrote the wrong last name. Okay, what's the name? Drexler or Drexel? Drexler. Okay. Anyway. Can you say Mitch Richmond? No. Um, Chip Schaefer? No. Okay. So Jamie shows up at his, at his house and he wants he wants Jamie to be with I wrote that in the in that nice way. The Beausoleil girls that he's hired, with that he's got. The Beausoleil girls. Well, okay. So this was. He wants them to get with him. Yeah, yeah. This was kind of crazy. Jamie comes into his place and he looks up and there's a swimming pool. There's girls in bikinis swimming in the ceiling. Yeah. Well, above his head. And he's kind of looking up and you know that it's kind of this fantasy. Like he's looking up like, whoa. And then. But he's not necessarily because when Drexler poses him like. These are both Soleil girls. We can do this. He's like, they have to be 15. So maybe, it, you know, the fantasy was very short-lived when he got a good look at the girls. Because Jamie does not seem interested in this scene. No. And Drexler, this is par for the course. Yeah. Which makes him very suspicious here. If she's, if Rosie was a both Soleil girl, if she's involved in that, and now we've got this guy who's tied to Darren and well, he hires him. And he says. It's weird. He says, I gave Rich, you know, he says essentially he gave Richmond $5 million so that he would clean up his messes. Yeah. He said he, Which, you know, what are his messes? Is it killing Rosie? He can is do it... whatever he wants because politicians clean up after him. Yeah, yeah. This is so very So he was questionable. buying him off so that he would, you know, hide whatever it is that he does. Yeah. So we're, at that point, you know, like I was just saying, you start wondering, is it that he killed Rosie? But Darren wouldn't be, if Darren was innocent. I think it's the typical. He wouldn't clean up. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's more that he's hiring I prostitutes. I think it's more, exactly. It Drugs, it prostitutes, it um, drag racing, right like Bieber, Biber. Wait, did you say drag racing? Drag racing, like Bieber. Is that Bieber? Bieber. Is that, did I have the wrong name? No, Justin Bieber? Yeah, yeah. He was drag racing? Yeah, that's what he got arrested for. Oh, I didn't know that. Was it like in the scene in Greece? 
No, it, but it's, it reminds me of this guy, like where they feel like they could just do whatever they want because somebody's going to clean up after them. Justin Bieber and was in one car and that One Direction band was there in the There you other. go. Oh, that would be and awesome. Then, and then the, who would be a girl that would come out there? One of the Kardashians goes out between them and throws down her, her hanky, I don't know what they call it, scarf, her hanky, <laughs> an old man. She pulls out her monogrammed hanky that she had just blown her nose into, and she throws it down, and they start their race. It's just like grease. Yeah, there you go. But it's One Direction versus the Beebs. So um, Mitch meets with Stan. Was she... I filibustering about the Beaver there? No, I, well, I started it, but Mitch me- meets with Stan. Mitch Richmond? <laughs> oh, I wish it's so it. painful. <laughs> um she goes to the, she goes to the, the I almost said the hospital. She goes to the prison and meets with him and she and uh she said she couldn't call the bondsman because the money's gone. Oh yeah. This is where she confronts him about the money. And then Yannick. She throws that one in. He borrowed money from Yannick, but she tries to make it seem like he hasn't changed. Yeah. And she says, I knew you would go back to being that man eventually. Um Hello, right. Mitch, you pushed him to go yeah, exactly. kill Bennett. Yes. He left her sitting there, and right he should. Well, it, he actually said to her, the only reason I'm in here and you're out there is that I had the balls to admit what I did. Absolutely. He is right. Yes. I mean, well, no, he's not totally right. He is half. He is a lot right. The, it is the reason he's in there. He's a lot more right than she is But it's more than just that he admitted, scene. it's that he did it, first mm. and foremost. But she... Was so she was just involved. as guilty, and she um, and and he he was a lot closer to the truth in this scene than she was. Right. Um, well, and now this is so they have this fight here, and he walks out, but he doesn't tell her what really happened. Why at this point wouldn't you say? I bought yeah. A house. I sunk the money into a house. It was right. foolish, but I thought we were going to have a life. I wanted Rosie and the kids to have this you know, house. He should have done that. Oh, uh, hello. He should have told her before he ever bought it. He should have. But at this at this exact moment, especially when what does he have to lose? He's in prison you, already. But you don't sell... You're having a fight, but you know what? Flip the cards there. Yeah. But I, you I don't... I would much rather have a, make her feel guilty for that than this. You don't take someone's life savings. No. And just without their knowledge, right. and buy something that big without their right. knowledge. So I don't care. There is nothing you could possibly tell me that would justify what he did. No. But at the same no, time, I agree. He is wrong. She is loves to play holier than thou, right. and she is just as guilty on a lot of things. But in this scene, all he had to do is say, "I put the money into a house." Right. Like I said, to me, I would think that he'd want to play the guilt card right there, but he doesn't. And, she, and none, none of it would have mattered because she right. wouldn't have. She only wanted to hear what she, you right. know, she was, she was right and thing. what she wanted to hear. Yeah. So Holder and Sarah figure out that the Tom, out that Tom Drexler was the guy with their both right. lay witness. Right. That he was there at the casino. So they've started putting this together. Now we've got Beausoleil, 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 and we've got Drexler. In this in this same scene, and mm-hmm. this is this is adding up to be pretty convicting here. Mm-hmm. Now, at this point, do you think that Drexler did it? Would, why would he have access to a campaign car? Because well, he's because, got a fleet no, of no, cars. No, no, I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. Because if if he's already working Darren for these deals, maybe he already had something in motion. Maybe he had he was like one of Darren's guys. Jamie, perhaps, was making a deal with Drexler or trying to, and he said, hey, I need to use your car. Come on. Well, it, I mean, Guys like that don't drive ordinary cars. Yeah, but if they're trying to take somebody out and kill them, they do. No, but the, the it, she wasn't killed premeditatively. She was, I think it was a, it was a. Well, do we know that for sure? I am, I am saying that. I mean, we're assuming that, but think about the very first thing we see when we see her running through the woods, mm-hmm. and we see her terrified, and somebody looks like they're hunting her. Right, because she... That could be premeditated. No, because she's about to tell on them. Tell them about what? Whatever, that they, they, maybe they attacked her, maybe they maybe she witnessed something, and she's trying to get away. It could be. And, and but, they're going to kill her. Isn't it possible that 
it was premeditated and they were literally hunting her? Could that not be part of it? I mean, if this if it's a serial killer, that's what they would be doing. So if Drexler's a serial killer and he's implying that he's got these messes, that could be premeditated. All right. I you know, I will We're not gonna get an answer right here. I right? will tell you that it is you possible. Okay. Good enough. That, did you just find the magic bullet to keep me from talking? Mm-hmm. Excellent. So um Sarah's ex, Jack's father, is sitting there in her office. And he says Jack needs a father. Right. He ha- and and uh he says that he has a family now, and he wants Jack to he wants to see Jack more, and he wants Jack to meet them. Well, and he says that he has a beautiful family now, like it's, as opposed it's, to the ugly family he started it, it, out as with, as opposed to this train wreck that he yeah. had before. Now, I'm not calling Sarah a train wreck, but back then she might have been a train wreck. And and what's funny is Holder walks in and, and asks, "Is that the deadbeat?" Yeah, he flushes him out <laughs> right is what he does. in his face. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yep. Play, playing big dog. Comes yeah. in there, kind of pushing him around. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was funny. That was funny. I, you know what? Once again, it's Holder. Well, and, and you know that he has a fondness for Jack and a protective... Right. A protective um, sort of spirit. Uh, so he wants to... Um, they share the bond that is Funyuns. He, yeah, and he doesn't, he doesn't want this guy to, to hurt him. Okay, so now they start looking there at the Beausoleil website yeah they got the their computer guy right and they're they're he looking finds, through but he finds terry's profile well, but how did he find terry's do you remember what happened they found the shoes that holder knew about in the first episode yeah. when he was like hey those are whatever and they made the joke about Him, sarah yeah here here they are he recognizes the shoes and it's like wait a minute mm-hmm. that's it and they're like that's not rosie and it's terry yeah, never, never in a million years yes. did I suspect that. And it mostly and because she's a train wreck, and why would why would she be a Beausoleil girl? We don't, but we don't know what time frame she was a Beausoleil girl. Yeah, and we don't know what their restrictions are for Beausoleil girls. But she, she gave her gifts to Rosie, the shoes, etc. Yes, and Rosie was just visiting the site. That's what she was in there, just looking through, looking for Terry or whatever. Well, so now we go, okay, was she a Beausoleil girl, or was she going there, like, that night? Posing as Terry. Posing as Terry, or was Terry there, and Rosie was depositing the money for her, or who knows what it is. Well, what's interesting about this scene is they they find there's a message board so the girls can warn each other. Yes. And one girl posted that a guy drove her down to the water asked her did she ever wonder what it's like to drown someone yeah and he calls himself erased Orpheus. the message on the board orpheus he used orpheus, the name yeah, orpheus he called, went by the name orpheus and that whole message thread has been wiped out yeah but but now they so now they at least have another lead where if they could find yeah who's the, this, this girl well either orpheus or the girl that said this guy drove her down to the water right well they need to find the girl first to try to identify who Orpheus is, because, well, unless they can find Orpheus's records. So that's that's where they're at. they got to figure out Orpheus is their number one suspect, yes. I would assume, at this point. So, so Darren meets with the governor. Yes. And, he, and the governor asks, would your wife approve of how you ran your campaign? And yeah. he is really struck by this, but he, sa- he says, she was my compass. If I win the election in two weeks' time, it will be because of her. Right, right. So Lily's the reason he's getting elected. And uh, the reason that he did he did run his campaign the way he did. He went off track for a moment in desperation, but she's what keeps him in line. Right, so Lil, Lily is the guiding force for him. Yeah. Um. So now we see Stan again. Mm-hmm. And it's very reminiscent to me of Sopranos when Tony would go and talk to Dr. Melfi. Yes. He's sitting there with a counselor, and he's kind of talking it out. But, he, but he's not talking a lot. He just tells a story about his family. Mm-hmm. But he's still not, once again, like I was saying, flipping over the cards earlier, he's still not flipping over the cards with this person. Well, he says, I, I, can't, I come home late from a move. My daughter's bike is there in the garage. Everyone is sitting at the table eating. Oh, this was a dream, Except right? some other guy at the head of the table, not me. And he says he felt nothing. His family was fine. So who was the man at the table? Yeah. Orpheus? Belko? Don't know. Mm, Phil Silvers, Sergeant Belko. 
built them. So we don't know what this dream is about, you know, right. if it, and if it just means that now because he's in he's in jail that he's no longer there that someone could be moving in and right he could just be having dreams about that like i'm i'm not going back to my family Mm -hmm. so that could be what that is um so holder and linden follow up a lead they're they're trying to figure out where beausoleil is and they end up going to this address and beausoleil isn't there but the server is and it's pimp my feet yeah it's a website called pimp my feet and it's where they have their facilities. Yes, yeah, their their cover is yeah. this pimp my feet. And at first the guy completely denies anything. And then they find the servers. Right. And then he's like, look, they pay me for this. I just host the site. All I do is I, they just use my space for the yeah. site. I have nothing to do with it. Uh, which is not true. Right. <laughs> but he, he's able to claim that. And uh, they get the owner then of pimp my feet to uh, pull up a file on Orpheus. And of course, there's no picture. Uh, and we also find out that that, clo- that account was closed the night that Rosie was killed. Yep. Very suspicious. Yep. Once again, Orpheus, number one suspect. Yes. So Terry is talking with Mitch, and she asks where Belko is, and and Mitch says Belko's gone. I fired him. And and then Terry says, "When are you bailing Stan out?" And Mitch says, "I'm not. We don't have any money." <laughs> Right. Terry then defends Stan. Right. And she lashes out at Mitch about Terry. At, about Terry? I don't know why I wrote that. About Rosie. Yeah. Yes, I meant that. And she kind of throws blame at her. She does. And then Mitch lashes back and they, you know, they're, uh, and says, apparently you knew my daughter better than I did. Right. And, and now we're sitting here watching you going, we know that because yes. you somehow had her tied up with Beausoleil and Terry had no, or Mitch had no idea about it. But then that. Terry says, I didn't. Maybe none of us knew her. Right. Meaning but we know that she Terry had, but, knows more. But Terry, is Terry trying to throw Rosie under the bus and imply that, no, no, she had secret, all these secret lives, like Could she had be. all this stuff going on and and she was playing us all. Right. Well, because if it comes out, it's going to come out that she was a Beausoleil girl and somehow got Rosie involved in that, yeah. it's going to look really bad for Terry. And, and gave her her ID We know and from seeing Terry with the, whatever it was, the governor or whatever, that, Hello, she is, that she's messed up. That's why she's there with, with their family so much. She is lost. Yeah. And... If if the blame for Rosie in any way comes back at her, she's gonna lose. She thinks she's gonna lose everything. And she and Belko will be in the same position, right? She doesn't want that in that little twin size bed at his mom's with looking oh. up at the picture of Stan's family. So Sarah's in her office and she's trying to get a rise out of Orpheus. So she keeps writing, "I know what you did" in capital letters. Right. Her phone rings and it's Holder. He's meeting with the that Bolsillet girl. That you know, yeah. Well, he's on a he's on a fake date with the Beausoleil yeah. girl, the one who posted the thing about Orpheus because he, he wants to get some information. He said she has three priors. He asks her about Orpheus, and he shows her pics of Rosie dead in the trunk. Right. And finally convinces her based on her three priors because he could just take her right in. Right. To jail. So she says, you know, the guy seemed sad and nice, and and. uh yeah. Well, she said she Richmond? said that he seemed she said that he seemed really sweet mm-hmm. and kind of sad, and that he creeped her out. Yeah, my first thought is Darren Richmond. Yeah, and I until this moment really was not thinking of Richmond as a Never. suspect, Mm-mm. but now I am. Yeah. So Mitch bailed him out. Right. Well, and she says she won't tell who it is, but. Doesn't she say something like, you don't know who you're messing with, you don't know what's going on here, and and Holder is like, just tell me, and she won't. She leaves. Uh, now, wait, you said Mitch bailed Stan out? What did you just say? That's what I thought at the time. That's what I thought at the time, too. But Somebody bailed know, him out. It was Terry. Yeah, we know that it's Terry. Um, but Holder answers the phone. It's the Beausoleil girl. Right. And... Uh, she says, go to 5th and Jackson to know who Orpheus is. And she wants protection for testifying. Right, right. So she's gotten up the strength to do this. She wouldn't tell him when she was there, but now she's like, well, we know why. 
But yeah. she's out there, and she calls him and tell, tells him where to go. Yep. Um, and then Sarah meets with Darren about Drexler. We're in that part where it's getting kind of fast. Yeah, this is the where they're, they're doing snippets. So Sarah right. meets with Darren about Drexler. She wants him to keep his distance. Right. And Darren's computer dinged when the email to Orpheus was sent. Well, he went, he went out of the room. He went to answer a phone call. So Sarah, from her phone... Sarah had no indication that it was Darren in any no. way leading up to this. She truly was over there to say, you know what? Something's up with this Drexler. Right. You, better, you need to keep away from right, him. Exactly. And she says to the guy on the phone, send the email again. She sends it. You hear the ding. Yes. Then she says she immediately knows. Send it again. Send it again. Ding. Ding. Send it again. Ding. And so she, she keeps goes t- tra- tracking it. She's trying to figure out where it is in, yes. the, in the house. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, we're not done with that part. Let's go. Holder is now in the rain. He's and going to the location. The the phone there's a phone booth there. The phone is off the hook. The girl is obviously calling from there. She's gone. Mm-hmm. It's just hanging there. And I don't know about you, but I'm thinking I, I'm, I'm confused at this point. Darren is Orpheus, but if she's saying come to this address, you're going to see Orpheus. I'm wondering is he going to look up and see Darren's apartment, or is Orpheus somebody different? We're being misled. What yeah. is going on here? Once again, I'm thinking Drexler might, not Drexler, uh, yeah, Drexler might be this guy. So I'm thinking maybe he's hanging out there. Yeah, you never know. And we weren't con- uh, but this totally is sure so it fast. was Darren. Yeah. And I, 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 my, the thoughts are just racing here. So we find out Orpheus is Darren when she's doing this thing. So Sarah finds the computer with the emails on it. Right. So totally no. And then Holder looks up and there's a wall of plastered campaign pictures yes. of Darren. So Holder knows it's Darren. And, Sarah knows it's Darren. And they're and on then, opposite ends and of And then the, right as both have realized it, Darren walks in and to the room on Sarah. The yeah. end. And on my notes that I wrote here, Terry Bale stand out in big letters yeah. because I the whole time thought it was Mitch that bailed Stan I did out. too. But it was actually Terry that did. Well, and you know, I, I just don't trust her. And I, I really... Yeah, well, you're suspicious of her in a I few ways. I have been in yeah. a lot of ways. But I, but I, then when she does that, I'm thinking, yeah, what is, what is her plan here? What is her game yeah, plan? Yeah, what's going on here? Because, um, you know, she's trying to score some points. What is, what exactly is she trying to do? Right. And right. why it's, is she going around Mitch? Yeah, why? And 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 I, there's just I something. Can't even get it out. There's something that's I'm not lining up, this. and I can't tell if it's that she's trying to get her hooks in him. Well, and there's so much not lining up right now. What, Darren's motivation, the Orpheus thing, like it doesn't. Why make would he sense? put himself in that much danger? Like, right? Why would you? Play on the edge like that in that well, if position, this is, but I guess people is, do it all the time. This is a discreet escort service, so you know. But if he did something to Rosie, if he's involved in that, uh, wh- what was he doing this whole time? And with Gwen and everything, and wasn't he with Gwen that night? So what? How does that make know. sense? It's just it's not adding up. It's not adding up. It's gonna go watch. Things are gonna more. start adding up soon. So that's it. We've got one more episode of this season, don't we? Yep. Do Lucky number we're thirteen. Find out? I I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I don't. Think I figure that we're they have to hold. They've got to hold you over to next to the next season. So. Here's why I don't think you're going to find out because I've heard that it that it it does not get resolved at the end of this season, or at least not the way you think it will, and it was dissatisfying to people watching it. Now I don't know if that's going to be true. Maybe it won't be dissatisfying to us because we're anticipating being dissatisfied. Exactly. Or because we know that we could just watch the next episode yes. for the next season. We don't it's have kind to of wait. Like, it's kind of like Sherlock. So Sherlock just debuted its third season. Mm-hmm. Okay. They only do three episodes a season. At the end of the second episode, there was like a, a, a three-year wait before the third season. And people were freaking out because it's some kind of cliffhanger. They're like, oh, my gosh. And today I was editing a podcast of ours that talked about this and told what the cliffhanger and the result and everything. And they were somewhat disappointed in, in what happened. And 
I had that thought, the same thought when I was listening, like, would you have been as disappointed if you went right into the next episode or right. you've been like, what an awesome thing. And it was paid off. Yeah. So I have a feeling we're going to have a very different experience than the people that, you know, watch the 13 episodes and then had to wait and then had to wait. Mm -hmm. so Agreed. That's it. All right. Are we done? Yeah. Thank you for we listening, everybody. On. Yeah. Thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook at uh, The Killing Podcast, uh, or you can go to the Southgate Media Group homepage on Facebook and get updates to all of our different shows there. Our website is www.southgatemediagroup.com. We have all of our different shows. We have blogs. We have all sorts of stuff going on there. And all the episodes are there, too, with cool artwork for each one that you don't see on other services, iTunes, Stitcher, what have you. Uh, but you can also follow us on iTunes and on Stitcher. So please do that. Give us good ratings. It really helps us. If you give us those five stars and give us reviews, it really matters to us and really helps with our positioning on iTunes and helps introduce other people to this show when you do that. My Twitter, last bit of business, R Southgate. Uh, you can follow me there. And once again, I tweet about all the different shows and about other stuff. That does it for the Killing Podcast and Southgate Media Group. I am Rob Southgate. I'm Martha Southgate. That's it, everybody. Maybe next time we'll find out who did kill Rosie Larson. Could be damned. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the Donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. <laughs> help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.